The average Tea Party member is over 50 years old, tends to be in the top 60th, 80th percentile in wealth, and uh, tends to be white. In other words, these politics reflect their racial and class interests. They are afraid of democracy. They have made their living, they have made their wealth, or at least they, and at least they think so, on making sure that there is a glass floor between them and everyone else. They like to talk about free, com free competition. They like to talk about equality of opportunity. They like to talk about free markets. They have cheated the entire way. In other words, how have they entered the middle class? Many of these folks, if they fought in World War II or they fought in Vietnam, they bought their home with an FHA loan. They get their health care through Social Security or through Medicare. When they lose a job, they went on unemployment. They went to school on the GI Bill. They sent their kids to school with Pell Grants. They're they, they drive on, a, on freeways paid for by federal money. They have lived off the fat of the welfare state since the 50s, and they are now trying to take it away from your generation. Right? It's, you know, what did Tom Brokaw call the, the World War II, like the greatest generation, right? I think we can safely say, and I don't mean to insult anyone here, anyone in particular, but I think it's fair to say that the baby boomers are the most selfish generation. They've lived off the fat of the welfare state, and now they want to deny it to everyone else. 85% of Arizonans over, over, eight, over the age of 65 are white. 50 plus percent of Arizonans 18 years and under are of color. I don't think it's too much of an exaggeration to say that what the Tea Party feels is when they say my America is being lost, they're not really against the welfare state. They're against giving the same benefits they enjoy to youth of color. And we must say, no way. You're not getting away with it. How many of you were here fighting SB 107 last year? Many of us. Many of us. Many of us were on the right side of the struggle. <coughs> Where is that now? Where is that issue? How has that issue have the struggles of undocumented people disappeared since 2006? Pierce is since gone. 2010? I'm sorry? Pierce is gone. Pierce is gone. Thank okay. God. But who's who's coming next? And who's, who's what are they going to do? What kind of do we trust the, set, the the new set of clowns in office? No. The only thing that defeated SB 1070 was the fear of, of was the boycott and the fear of public disruption. You all who participated in the movements, you kicked Pierce out. You stopped a worse law from being passed like SB 1611 last year. You all stopped it. Now the question is, is if we decide that this Occupy movement and this immigrant rights movement are two separate things, we're done for. We're done for. You, I, we need to say what <coughs> happens to undocumented people in this state is what happens to me. When you try to tell undocumented folks that they don't have a, a, a right to work in this state, when you, when the system tells them that they don't have the right to, uh, to bring their families and to live and, and, to, and to rent a house or, or to buy a house in this state, when we tell them they don't have a, when they tell them that they are criminals just for being in this state, we have to say, you've made me into a criminal. You've made me undocumented. You've made me unemployable. And I won't take it. That's building the 99%. That's not the white democracy. This is police violence an unusual thing? South of Van Buren, west of, 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 of the I-17? It is the norm. It is the norm. And we know that. We know that. And we have to make a, a decision here at this moment. Are we going to regard the cops as part, of the, as, as, as part of the problem like they are? Or are we going to say, uh, just be nice to us here, and then do whatever else you got to do outside of here? Because if we just say, be nice to us here, because look at us, we're clean cut, we're nice, we don't smell that bad, etc. But go ahead and do what you got to do on the west side. Go ahead, do what you got to do on South Mountain. We're dead. This is not a movement of 99%. That's a white democracy. The police are perfectly willing to treat you like they are working class black and Latino youth. They're perfectly willing to do that. Are you willing to think in solidarity with the youth of color? And are you willing to say what the police do on Broadway and 7th Avenue is, is just as unjust as when they come here at night and pick us off when you're camped? <laughs> Once you're willing to do that, 
That's the 99%. They can't stop. They can't stop. But as long as we think, like the Tea Party thinks, like the like the one percent things, like the cops think, like they thought in Bacon's the, the, those who, who meant to undo Bacon's rebellion, as long as we think that, as long as we get ours, we don't care about theirs. We're failed. We're doomed. Build the ninety nine percent. Abolish the white democracy. That's what I got.